Why has Sony been so methodical and seemingly slow in bringing out the next generation full frame mirrorless body like the rumored A7 V? Is their strategy all about squeezing every last drop of value from the current Sony A7 IV? Or are they patiently waiting for the perfect moment to drop a truly groundbreaking upgrade across the entire A7 line? If you're into in-depth camera launches, long-term performance, low-light mastery, and mirrorless innovation, hit subscribe because we're diving deep. Your seasoned landscape shooter turned camera news scavenger, scouring rumor boards, manufacturer interviews, and behind-the-scenes chatter so you don't have to, giving you time back to actually chase that epic sunrise, lug your gear into that icy forest, or wrangle the dog who'd rather wrestle muddy paws than hold still for a shot. So, the delay of the A7 V and the still unconfirmed A7S IV has sparked a flurry of speculation. Some folks are outright saying Sony quietly pulled the plug on the A7S IV, while others are asking, will the A75 ever arrive? In a recent chat with Phototrend, Sony senior product manager Fabris Oboff dropped a revealing line. Our philosophy is not to refresh every year at all costs. We build sustainable families with major leaps each generation. Translation? If the existing gear still sells like hotcakes and holds its own against the competition, there's zero rush to launch a Me Too update. And that has big implications. Many of us longtime Sony shooters feel successive mirrorless bodies have felt like incremental tweaks rather than sweeping leaps of innovation. Sure, when Sony delivered the Sony A9 III with the new global shutter sensor, it was a proper tech leap in mirrorless world. Sony clearly can innovate, but for the mainstream full-frame A7 line, especially cameras under the tags, $4,000 price point, recent updates have largely been evolutionary, slightly better red speeds, incremental AF improvements, mild sensor tweaks, and very few headline-grabbing next big thing features. Meanwhile, the A7 IV and A7 III before it continue to sell strong, so from a business perspective, Sony doesn't need to rush the next flagship. Since Sony opened up the E-mount in 2010, its guiding ethos has been maximum freedom, more choice, richer ecosystem. That in itself is a subtle dig at competitors like Canon or Nikon who, at least historically, have been more protective about third-party lens access. Sony's message, if the system works and is adopted, there's less pressure to launch a version 5 just for the sake of a marketing cycle. So when you strip away the surface drama of when will the A7 V arrive, what you're left with is a more strategic lens. Sony is biding its time, waiting until they can deliver substantial improvements in workflow, long-term reliability, thermals, electronic shutter performance, reading speeds, tethered operation, internal 10-bit options, audio log workflows, EVF responsiveness, and AI-driven autofocus, rather than chasing headline specs like 8K, 12K, or 100 MEPI, just because everyone else is doing it. In fact, in the interview, they openly say features like false color overlays, open gate 6K, or hyper high resolution modes aren't used much in our user base. So we don't see big value putting them in. Instead, they highlight reliability, streamlined pipeline, and real world usability as the priorities. What might the A7 V or the next S series offering actually bring? Based on leaks and chat threads, we're likely looking at faster readout speeds to eliminate rolling shutter, larger stacked or semi-stacked sensors for better dynamic range and low light, AI-enhanced subject tracking including through occlusion, smoother electronic shutter transitions, better thermals enabling long continuous takes, internal 10-bit 4.2.2 video, improved bit rates, time code support, tethering workflows for pro studios, brighter EVFs with higher refresh rates, and faster preset systems than we've seen before. What we won't likely see, at least not in this generation, is another megapixel race or a wild 12K video headline. Sony's comment suggests they believe photographers and hybrids right now care more about, can I trust the camera to just work in the wild, under low-light snow-covered trees, handheld at f1.2, pitch black forest floor, than about raw spec sheets. So if you're sitting on the fence and asking yourself, should I pick up the A7 IV now? Wait for Black Friday deals? Or hold out for the mysterious A7 V or next S model? The answer flows like this. If the body you have today meets your needs, if your gear delivers the image quality, autofocus, video specs, and reliability you reach for, then go ahead and buy when the deal is sweet. Yes? Black Friday is likely your best bet for the A7 IV. But if you're the kind of shooter who lusts after the latest tech, 
wants the future-proof body, and is willing to wait for the next major platform shift, rather than a mere increment, then hold off for when Sony drops the big headline. Remember, I've chatted with pro photographers covering major events who are still using bodies like the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, 10 plus years old, and they're still getting the job done because reliability, workflow and operator skill matter far more than chasing the number. Gear FOMO is real, I've got film cameras, vintage DSLRs on the shelf, but the fact is, tech matures. The big leaps come less often than the marketing cycles pretend. If you're sucking down this video, thanks for sticking with me. Let me know in the comments, what's more important to you in a pro mirrorless body right now? Is it super high resolution? Ultra long battery life? AI tracking for wildlife or events? Robust studio level tethering? And of course, if you want updates, leaks, hands-on first impressions of the A7 V, keep a close eye on this channel. I'll bring you raw analysis, full spec breakdowns, comparison shoots, low light tests, and workflow tips. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this valuable, please tap that like button. Subscribe for all the future leaks and reviews. And hit the bell so you don't miss when the A7 V finally drops. Until then, have a fantastic day out there shooting, whether you're chasing frost-covered peaks, dark forest shots at dawn, or your dog refusing to sit still for the frame. I'll see you soon. Things are warming up on the horizon for this next big leap in mirrorless. Take care and keep capturing the extraordinary.